Are you craving chicken pot pie, but you don't want to waste all those bites or points on the crust? Well, I have a great alternative for you here with my chicken pot pie potato casserole. For one quarter of this pan, it's only three bites. Creamy, satisfying, and delicious. And it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker. And on this channel, I share recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Today's recipe is for chicken pot pie potato casserole. So if you like chicken pot pie, but you don't want the buttery crust to eat up all of your bites or points or calories, then I've got a recipe for you here. Now let me go over the ingredients real quick and then I will start with a little bit of prep work. I have a pound of ground chicken breast. You want to make sure that it's chicken breast because ground chicken will have some bites or points. Ground chicken breast does not, depending on the plan you're on obviously but you want chicken breast if you can find it. It's a little more expensive. You could make your own in a food processor, um, but if you want convenience, that's the way to go. We have some cooking spray. We have a half a cup, yeah. We have a half a cup of diced onion. We have some carrots, which I'm going to show you how I dice them up. What I'm doing is I'm using baby carrots. So much easier than trying to get a whole carrot and to cut it into dices, but I'll show you that in a second. We have some green beans. Originally, when I made this recipe, I used fresh green beans, which you can, but these are canned. Same thing, no big deal. We have a can of corn, and I also have a couple of ears of corn from the other night. So I'm going to show you how to cut the kernels off of those, just in case you don't know how. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh, the seasonings. In this mixture here, I have a cup, uh, a cup, yeah. In this mixture here, I have a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of onion powder, and a half teaspoon of thyme. So pretty easy, half teaspoon of almost everything except for the salt. We have a can of Campbell's 98% fat free. Sometimes this will be called healthy request. And I'm using cream of mushroom. You can use any cream soup that you want um, that's condensed. You don't want an actual cream soup. You want the condensed cream soup you can use any flavor. You can use celery, you could use mushroom, you could use chicken, it's your call. So you don't have to use that one just because that's what I'm using. We have a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, give it a little tang. We have three cups of frozen hash browns that I've let thaw. Now one thing you should be aware of, when I put these in here, it was three cups. Since they've thawed and settled, they're down to about two and a half. So you go by the frozen amount, not the thawed amount. If you look at the recipe, it says three cups frozen shredded hash browns, comma, thawed. That means they want you to measure the item as it is in its frozen state, then let it thaw. Now, if it said three cups of thawed hash browns, then you would thaw them first before you measure them. So in case you've ne ever wondered why it sometimes says comma thawed, comma chopped, comma whatever in a recipe, that's why. The comma means you do that after you've measured. So another thing we have here is three quarters cup of fat-free cheddar cheese that's divided. 
If you use reduced fat or even a full fat, it's going to alter the bites, points, calories, macros, etc. So as always, input everything into the recipe builder as you are making it. Don't rely on my bites, my calories, or whatever. They'll pro probably be approximately the same as you get. But if you want something more precise, just make sure you put it into whatever app you're using to calculate everything. I have my frying pan standing by. I also have a 9 by 13 casserole dish. And I put it onto a baking sheet just in case there's any bubble over. And my oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So everything is ready. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way, show you the prep on the carrots and the corn, and then we will move on. All right, so the reason I use baby carrots is they're just much easier than trying to cut a giant carrot and get it all situated correctly and um, if you want to make it even simpler on yourself, use frozen carrots. They're already cubed up. They're already diced. These are about the size, the width of a dice. So what I'm just going to do is, and you need a cup of this. So I have my cup standing by and because we're going to cook them at the same time as the onions, I'm just going to throw them in with the onions once I get to the cup. So what I'm going to do is just Hold a few of these baby carrots together. Just slice across. And I always have a little precarious moment towards the end in case my hand's too shaky. But I am managing. Now you don't have to worry about everyone being precisely the same size or any of that stuff. But you can see they're all pretty uniform, about the size of what a dice would be. Okay, this one may be a little overkill here. And this one, I guess. So we're just going to finish cutting these up. I'll do a little speed action here and get to the end of these carrots so then I can show you the corn. Okay, so there we have our cup of carrots. They're just sliced baby carrots. So much easier than, as I said, dicing up an entire carrot or two. Not as easy as the frozen ones, but so I'm going to set this aside. Bring in my corn. Oh, let me weigh out the package of the carrots just to see how much I used. All right, so just to give you an idea like I did with the uh, broccoli and the whiskey, chicken and broccoli. For a cup of carrots, um, I used just about four ounces of this package. This is a 16 ounce package, so about a quarter of this got, um, got me to a cup. So that is probably what you will need if you decide to go this route. All right, now on to the corn. Like I said, these were from the other night, and I'm not gonna use them for anything else. I'll throw a little extra corn in here. You can play around with the vegetables. You can add more. You can change them up. You can add mushrooms. You can take out the onions. Jennifer Lynn, I am looking at you when I say that. But to cut the corn, you're going to get the base end and see if it's a little wobbly here. I'm going to cut that off so that it's flatter. Of course, my shaky hands don't help. But you're just going to start here at the top, 
and cut down, spin it around, go to the next section. And they come out in like big sheets of corn kernels. And then you can just break them up into your, in your hands. And that's all there is to it. Whoa, that one flew. Now, sometimes I've seen chefs put this into a big bowl with a little bowl turned upside down so they don't fly all over like I had a few little kernels fly off. I'm not going to go through all that fussiness. Now, I'm just going to break this up. It, it's okay if some of them stay clumped together. It's not going to be a big deal. But actually, let me measure this out and see how much I got since I still have my cup measure over here. All right, so two ears of corn gave me a little over a cup. So we're gonna have a lot of corn in here. But that is just fine. Snow bites, no points. Why not bulk it up a little bit? So let me take care of all this stuff and then we will finally get started on cooking. Okay, so I'm going to set my frying pan over medium high heat. In case you haven't noticed or haven't seen any of my other videos, that tends to be the go-to heat for me for cooking because it gives you some of that browning, some of that, what they call the Maillard reaction, where your food gets a little brown, gets a little color, and that enhances any flavors that you build in the recipe. So I like cooking at a little higher heat, um, but you just have to make sure that you're watching to make sure nothing happens. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do now that the pan is hot, is add in the things that are gonna take the longest to cook, which are the carrots and the onion. Now, normally, I would add some salt at this point, because I like to add salt throughout cooking so that each layer is flavored. But because we are adding our spice mixture a little later, I'm not going to do that. Also, the cream soup, condensed cream soup, will have some saltiness to it as well, so you don't want to overload it. That can always be added at the table later. Okay, so this is going to cook for about four to five minutes, four to five minutes, just in case my Stiff jaw made it sound like I said 45 minutes. Made it sound like I said 45 minutes. And I'm gonna let it sit in between stirrings. Again, like I said, to get some of that caramelized browning on here to enhance the flavor. So once these get to that point, I will show you what we do next. Okay, you can see some of the onions and carrots getting little specks of brown on them. And that's exactly what you want. That brownness is going to enhance the flavor. It's not just gonna be a bland carrot or a bland onion. You're giving it some caramel notes, some extra depth of flavor that really enhances any dish that you're cooking. So now we are going to add in the green beans and the corn. And it doesn't matter if these were fresh green beans, canned green beans like I'm using, or even frozen. If they were frozen, you might want to thaw them first just so everything's around the same temperature. But even then, you still just have to cook it a little bit longer. And we're gonna let this cook all together now for about another three to four minutes. 
because you don't you wanted the tougher vegetables the carrot the onion if you were using cauliflower you would want to add that earlier broccoli probably the same thing because it's a little tougher and takes a little longer to cook than the corn or the green beans especially since they're canned but we'll let that cook for three to four minutes i'll be right back all right so it's been three to four minutes just warming these vegetables through and allowing the onions and carrots to cook a little bit further so now we're going to add in the chicken breast so we're going to push all of this off to the side one side of the pan i'll push it away from me so it's easier for me to work with the chicken breast on this side and i'm going to give it another quick little spray just because it is chicken breast with no real fat so one don't want any sticking and even though this is a non-stick pan you never know little insurance never hurt anyone well that's not exactly true i do watch true crime so i know insurance can hurt any anyway that's beside the point now that the chicken's in here i'm gonna just break it up a little bit and let it cook but once we break this up the first time you can mash it down a little bit to spread it out nice and thin we're going to cover everything in the pan with the seasoning now you do have to be careful when you're putting seasonings or spices over something that's cooking because the steam will make some of this fly off you can see the steam moving a little bit there you don't want it flying off into the sunset you want to make sure you're getting it into your dish and just going to continue breaking up the chicken breast the ground chicken breast as it cooks now if you want you could use chicken breast cut it up into little dices um, or even slices thin slices um that's your choice you could do this with beef if you have the bites or points or calories or macros or whatever you're using you could do this with some some beef some ground beef some slices of steak some cheese steak um, some sandwich steaks kind of thing again like i say in every video i want recipes that are adaptable that if i don't have chicken breast can i do something else yes if i don't have all these vegetables can i or don't like these vegetables can i use something else absolutely if there's a seasoning you don't like change it this is as i say all the time this is your weight loss journey don't let anyone even me dictate how you're going to travel that journey i'll give you some directions you may take them you may take a detour it's all on you it's your choice so don't feel like you are strapped into one way of cooking something just because you are dieting this isn't a diet this is a lifestyle and i can easily get behind this because the food is great i mean i don't feel deprived maybe depraved sometimes but not deprived and like i said before in a previous episodes on this channel um don't compare things especially if you're on a weight loss journey don't compare oh well this isn't chicken pot pie really because i'm not getting that crust that that buttery flaky crust that i like do you like this that's all that matters you you can't compare things it's going to be apples and oranges so now i'm just stirring the now that the chicken is cooked i'm stirring that in 
and actually pushing the pan off the heat for some reason. Um, so you're just going to mix this all in there. Now the next step is to add in our condensed cream soup. And I want, I will turn it down. You don't have to, but just because I'm recording and I am not always very quick, I'm turning it down just so I don't have any issue, but you don't have to. And I'm going to add this in. This whole can goes in. And like I said, you don't have to use cream of mushroom like I'm doing. You can do cream of chicken, cream of celery. You could maybe even use the, um, it wouldn't exactly be a pot pie, but it might be interesting to use the cheddar cheese condensed soup. I'm not sure what I'd call that, but chicken cheddar pot pie. Um, but you want to add this in. Of course, I try to get it so it doesn't touch the counter and it touches the counter. So you, that, that soup goes in and the Dijon mustard. You could add a little bit more of this if you like the flavor of Dijon, but this just gives it a nice little sharp bite of the vinegar that's typically in mustard, but it's not overpowering or overwhelming. It's just a little note in there. So now we're gonna stir this all together. And you can see it is coming together and looking like a chicken pot pie filling. So you just wanna warm that through so everything gets coated. And that looks perfect. Let me clear up a few of these things and then move on. Okay, so this has warmed the soup up a little bit. Now I'm going to add in the half cup of the cheddar cheese. Now, as I said in the recipe, it says three quarter cup divided. That's gonna be the one half cup that's gonna go in now and then a quarter cup for later. So this just goes in and you just stir it in to get it a little melty. doesn't have to melt thoroughly. It'll be in the oven for about 20 minutes. So it can melt there if it doesn't melt here. Okay, that looks good. Let me turn off the heat and we will move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is to just put all of this into your casserole dish. Like I said, this is a nine by 13 and you want every last bit of this goodness in there. And just spread that out. And again, I'm taking off the progressives so that I know if it's actually even and not just my eyes playing tricks on me. Now this is a pretty hearty meal. It's Great for a weeknight, not too long of a prep time, really. So that's all perfectly even. Let me get my glasses back. And now you're going to take your hash browns and just scatter those over the top. Now, when it comes to the hash browns, there are a few things that you should know that, first of all, if you wanted it, crispier than it will be just out of the oven, there are a couple of options. You can cook these hash browns up in a zipper pan for a little bit just to get them a little browner. And I'm gonna just spread these out across the top. Um, you could do that, cook them separately before you put them on top just to get them a little browner than they will be right out of the oven. Or just before, after the 20 minutes, you can put them under the broiler for maybe three or four minutes, let them brown up a little bit, and then follow the next step. 
So I'm going to get this into the oven with my sheet pan, just so there's no bubbling over. And it'll be in there for 20 minutes before we move on to the next step. So I will be back to show you that in just a second. Okay, so there it is after the first 20 minutes. And you can see the top, the potatoes have a little bit of browning. They're definitely getting a little crispier, but they're not gonna, like I said, get overly brown. So if you want to, you could set the broiler for a few minutes now to brown them up a little bit, or you could have cooked them in the pan before and put them on top that way. What I'm going to do now is just take that last quarter cup of cheese, the fat-free cheddar, and sprinkle it all over the top because everything is better with cheddar. Um, and it's not going to cover a lot. You just want a little sprinkling. And then I'm going to take some of my cooking spray and you want to just spray the cheese to help it melt because there is no fat in cheese which is usually what helps it to melt so by adding a little bit of the cooking spray that creates a kind of fat substitute in a way that will then help the cheese to melt a little more evenly so this is going to go back into the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes then it'll be ready to serve up so i will be back shortly all right, there it is, chicken pot pie potato casserole. Now, while I was discussing browning the top, Paul did come out and request, because he had overheard me, that I brown the top. So I did put it under the broiler for probably about two or three minutes. Now, when you do put anything under the broiler, turn on the interior light and watch it because this can go from brown and crispy to black and crunchy in no time. So this is with it under the broiler for about three minutes maybe. And nice and brown. It would have been a bit paler than this if you didn't want to broil it and you don't have to, but because it was a special request, I did so. Now for one quarter of this pan, it's just three bites. Yep, three bites, three blue points. I am on the iTrack Bites Better Balance plan, which is equivalent to the WW Blue plan. For calories, if you're following calories, it'd be 396 calories. And if you're following macros, the fat would be 4.3 grams, the carbs would be 41.9 grams, and the protein would be 37.2 grams. And again, that's as I've made it here. If you alter any of the ingredients, like I added more corn than I initially had in the recipe, so it's not exactly the same calories, but it would be the same bites because the corn is a zero bite food, zero point food. But there you have it, chicken pot pie potato casserole. I hope you will give this a try and let me know what you think. And if you like videos like this, if you like this recipe, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell for the next time I upload a video. And again, this is your weight loss plan. This is your journey. If chicken doesn't do it for you, use 96% ground beef. It will up the points a little bit and the bites, but it'll be what you want. Don't feel like you have to deprive yourself. This is definitely comfort food at its best and you will not feel deprived at all. So I hope you will give it a try, and until next time, bye.